welcome once again in our previous video on the real time quantitative pcr we had seen that while the we are the pcr is running that is while the polymerase chain reaction is taking place we can quantify the amount of amplicons that are produced and this is done by using some fluorescent molecule by measuring the fluorescence so now in this video and the upcoming uh, videos we will deal with the various methods of this real time qpcr or the rt pcr we have seen that the real time pcr it is of different types based on how we provide fluorescence to the system one method is by using some dna binding dye that fluoresces and the other is by using a probe whose hydrolysis it yields fluorescence in the system so when we say the dna binding dye it may bind to different parts of the dna molecule different parts means the major groove is there the within the dna double helix that may be there or towards the minor groove so basically these dna binding dyes they either bind at the minor groove or they are the intercalating dye based methods so in this video of ours we are going to talk about these dna binding dye based methods now these dyes they may be present within the double helical structure that is they may be the intercalators the fluorescence molecule or they may bind at the minor grooves of the dna double helix but at whichever point they bind the two basic requirements of the chemical substance that can be used as a dye in this method of rt pcr the two basic requirements are that there should be the increase in fluorescence when it binds to the double stranded dna because we will measure the actual amount of amplicons on the basis of the fluorescence that is produced in our system and secondly since they are chemical molecules so because of the presence no inhibition of the basic polymerase chain reaction or to take place so these dyes or these chemical molecules which are used for this purpose they have to fulfill these two basic conditions and the most widely used or the most popular dye used in this method it is the cyber green dye the cyber it is basically the registered name for this dye which binds to the double helical structure of the dna molecule and once it is in the bounded state with the double helical structure in this state it fluoresces so more the number of amplicons greater will be the fluorescence of the system and in this way we can detect the a double stranded dna molecule that is produced or that is present in the system but the main problem with this is that these dyes that is the cyber green dye it is non specific that is, is it can bind anywhere within the dna molecule the only condition that is to be fulfilled for its binding is that it has to be the duplex molecule so the chances of non specific detection is very high in this method 
that is it can bind even to the segments of dna when the primer it anneals with the uh, your template strand even at that point it can bind so wherever any type of double bond is present it can produce fluorescence so if we just look at the different steps of this particular method initially we have the template the double stranded dna with which we start our polymerase chain reaction so this cyber green dye it is added to the system and as soon as it is added upon it binds to this double stranded dna molecule and fluorescence is produced now we know that in polymerase chain reaction the first step is melting the dna that is denaturing opening up the hydrogen bonds between these two uh, the strands of dna molecule so as soon as these two strands of dna molecule they separate from each other these dye molecules they are set free and they do not produce any fluorescence but as the polymerization reaction progresses and more and more of amplicons are produced the total amount of fluorescence that will increase in proportion to the number of the amplicons produced so by measuring the intensity of this fluorescence we can find the or we can track the quantity of the amplicons produced during this polymerase chain reaction now like any other method even the cyber green dye based method it has got some advantages and disadvantages so the basic advantages of these cyber dye method is that it can be monitored that is we can measure the quantity of the intensity of fluorescence in any double stranded dna sequence it is not specific that for any particular type of dna sequence a particular type of dye or modification of this dye has to be used it's not so now no probe is required so in order to design a probe we have to know the sequence a part of the nucleotide sequence so that the probe can be designed it is not required and this reduces the cost then the actual uh, running setup and assuming that the pcr primers if they are well designed the reaction it progresses smoothly and the intensity of fluorescence it denotes the uh, number of amplicons next advantage is that the amount of signal is dependent upon the mass of the double stranded dna produced in the reaction so if the amplification efficiencies they are the same the amplification of a longer product will generate more signal as compared to and uh, the amplicons produced by a shorter segment of dna that means longer is the segment whose polymerase chain reaction is in progress more will be the fluorescence even in lesser number of cycles because these molecules these dye molecules they attach themselves throughout the length of a double stranded mole dna molecule now the primary disadvantage of this system is that it may even produce uh, false positive signals because it can bind to any double stranded dna even to non specific double stranded sequences so in order to 
mitigate this disadvantage the melt curve analysis is performed now what is this melting curve analysis basically the amplification reaction is completed and the fluorescence signals they are recorded that means now all the amplicons in the system they are in the form of a duplex molecule so for melting curve analysis the templates they are again denatured because our objective of this melting curve analysis is to determine the non specific bindings of this dye now once this template is melted that means the uh, degree of fluorescence it will decrease and we know that in order to melt very large sequences not only we require more time but even the temperature required to break the hydrogen bonds between the two strands of a large stretch of dna is high that is we need higher temperature and more time for the larger sequences in order to denature the larger sequences and these non specific uh, bands they are very small stretches of dna so they will melt very soon at a lower temperature and this change in fluorescence that takes place when we melt the product of any polymerase chain reaction the rt polymerase chain reaction at that point of time the intensity of the fluorescence produced that gives us an idea of the amount of non specific bindings in the system so these because of its simplicity because of uh, the means a less cost the running time the time that is required for this type of rt pcr that is real time uh, quantitative analysis of the polymerase chain reaction product this method of using a fluorescent dye or a dna binding dye it is of more use however the other method that is the hydrolysis probe based method that we are going to study about in the next video